Austin, welcome to your sixth Roblox with scripting tutorial. And I can never get the word sixth right, like sixth, sixth, ugh. I'm way too southern for that, I guess, I don't know. But anyway, tonight we're gonna cover events. Something called events. So, an event, like the name might imply, occurs when, well, the correct term is fires, when something happens, like not fire as in burning fire and death, but fire like firing a gun. It goes off. An event goes off when something happens. So to give you an example, we're going to first turn off outlines because that's ugly, and we're going to look at a part. Now, you may or may not have heard of the object browser, but this can be useful for not only finding events, but different built-in functions for something, for different instances. Uh, right now we're going to find part, because that's what we're working with. We're working with a part uh, here. Okay, so here we see a list of built-in functions and properties and... Okay, <clears throat> here we find the events at the bottom with the little lightning symbol. So you see that the event has a name and a summary or description of what it does. Uh, we're gonna work with touched right now. This does not have a description, I guess, but it's pretty self-explanatory. This event fires when the part is touched. Uh, there's also something called touch ended, which does have a description. It fires when the part stops touching another part. Um, uh, we'll work with that too tonight. Okay, so touch event. There are a lot of different types of events, and I'm thinking of making tutorials based solely on different types of events. I'm different videos for different events just to show you what they're like because there is a broad list of events, and I'm probably gonna have include a link to a Roblox wiki page in the description of the video it has pretty much a full list of all the events like in Roblox for GUIs, bricks, different instances just everything uh, yeah I'll link you to that later so for now we're going to make a simple script so there are either there's you can set this up one of two ways you can either say set it up like a regular function, call it touched, uh, no I did that wrong, okay there, the parentheses, say function touched and then call it down the line script.parent.touched connect, no, that's not how it goes, touched, I think that's how it works, uh, I don't know, I don't use that method much, you can look on the wiki for that. Sorry if I got that wrong, don't quote me on that, but this is how I usually set up functions because it just saves an extra line and it's simpler to me. It might not work for you, it might confuse you because of parameters. Uh, they can look a little odd, but I'll explain that too. Uh, we're gonna say script.parent.touched connect function and enter. One thing I want to show you guys, I think it's called an autofill, but it's that thing that pops up when you're typing sometimes. Uh, yeah, you'll see it right here. Like, it's autofill or something. It'll, it'll help you, well, script, I guess. It'll give you different events or properties that you might want to fill in the next word with, whatever you're doing. Right, I'll, I'll use it right now. Script.parent.touched. Yeah, you can just press enter and it'll finish it for you. But anyway, with an event, we always want to use a colon connect and then parentheses. Uh, connecting an event, pretty much that's what makes the event work, what makes it function. There's also something called disconnect you can disconnect an event I think that's how you type it out but yeah you can disconnect an event uh, that's we don't we won't use that much I don't think I've never used the disconnect uh, 
thingy. Uh, it probably won't come up much in a lot of coding, but it, it does sometimes. It just depends on what you're doing, and I've never come across it yet, I guess. Uh, so we are going to move along with the function. So we're going to say when the brick is touched, it's going to turn... Uh, I'm just going to turn royal purple because that's an exotic color. But how are we going to do this, you might say? We're going to need to use arguments and parameters. Really only parameters here, since because of the syntax we're writing this in. Uh, so we're going to use the parameter hit. You might have seen this in a lot of touched events because it's the parameter hit is commonly used just because it's easier to remember. because whatever is touching your part it hit the part so yeah you can use that if you want for simplicity's sake or whatever or you could say dog cat monkey chair vacuum like it can be whatever you want we're just gonna say hit for now because it'll be easier for you to remember in the long run uh... so uh, yeah, I'll use that in a few minutes, actually. What we're doing now, we won't actually need it. Uh, anyway, script.parent.brick color equals brick color dot new uh, royal purple. When you're using, when you're making, when you're changing a brick color using brick color dot new, you always have to make sure you're getting the lowercase and uppercase right like the first word of every color that roblox offers you see that bright violet the v is lowercase uh the o in light orange is lowercase really red uh, the red is lowercase like that's just how all roblox colors are on this little brick color selector thingy you could also use color 3.new i believe which pretty much let you select a custom color, but we aren't going to use that because I'm not sure if you can even do that with regular parts, bricks. I don't know. Never tried it. It's usually for GUIs, actually. But anyway, uh, we're going to test this out. Always use good grammar and scripts. Okay. Whoa, it worked. Yay. Uh, we're touching in multiple multiple times, so this event is not really going to run more than once. It will, but it won't do anything because it's already purple. But anyway, um, okay, no, here we are. Now we're going to create a lava brick. We're going to change the color to bright red. Uh, yeah, we'll anchor it just because uh, we're going to take away those ugly studs and add a cool little material. Uh, granite, marble. Yeah, granite looks like lava, so let's do that. So, now we're going to use that parameter hit because since we're making a kill brick, a lava brick, we're going to need to know what's hitting it because well so it knows what to kill pretty much so you could do this one of two ways the I'd say the most efficient and clean way is to just use the built-in function break joints hit colon break joints because it's a simple three lines it saves lines it's clean, it's nice, and it will get the job done as you see here. It will break your humanoid apart. It will kill you. Uh, or you could do... Uh, there was another method where hit, hit, if, hit, I'm the first child humanoid, then uh, 
hit dot humanoid dot health equals zero. I think that's how it goes. Uh, please work, please work. Okay, yeah, that didn't work. I'm sorry, I don't do that often. You could probably just look at a free model or something to figure out how that works. The way it works is it searches for the humanoid inside of whatever it's being hit to check if it's an actual humanoid, then it just uh, does the damage, sets the humanoid's health to zero, and yeah, I just like this way better, even though I don't really use bricks that kill very often, I don't know. Break joints just seems much simpler, so <clears throat> we're going to undo, 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 I know, redo. Now, redo, it's going to be a nice little brick again. So, we're going to go back to that one event I told you about called Touch Ended. It fires when the part stops touching another part. Now, we're going to make it change colors again for simplicity's sake, to show you how this works. Script.parent.touched colon connect function. We don't need a parameter because we're, it's not working with whatever touches it. We're going to do script.parent.color, no, brick color, dot new. Brick color equals brick, uh, so many typos, new royal purple. Uh, we already know this works just because now we're gonna indent, or no, new line twice and say script.parent.touch ended connect function script.parent.brick color equals brick color dot new uh, what is now it's medium stone gray we're gonna have it revert back. So let's test this. It is royal purple. Okay, this is a little buggy because as you can see our car my avatar's legs just bob up and down on it so it's not always touching it but yeah serves the purpose pretty much uh, so that's a couple of basic events for you um, yeah like I said I might make different videos in the future just based on well four specific events show you how to use them uh, I'll take any requests you want. Like I might have mentioned in my last video, I'm starting a new segment to my channel based on viewer requests. If you have something you want me to show you how to make, whether it be building, scripting, anything in between, I'll do my best to make that for you, show you how that could be done. Uh, so yeah, just you can post that in the comments or private, mes me, private message me on Roblox Recurring Nightmare. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope this helps. So post in the comments if you want me to go over any more events, suggestions for my next video. I'll probably do it on more built-in functions. Uh, that phone rang. Uh, but like I said, just post in comments if you have suggestions for my next video, anything else you want me to go over. I take personal requests, requests on that new segment of my channel. So yeah, like and subscribe. If you want, if this helped you at all, thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.